Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hi guys, if you are new here, you are absolutely welcome. My name is so on today's video we're going to be doing a quick q a so i posted a comment in my community asking you guys to ask me a few questions because it's that time of the year where we do our q a and you guys ask some really interesting questions in today's video i'm going to be addressing those questions so the first question is would you ever do a collaboration with other youtubers i would love to see a Fumi and tatiana market vlog would i ever do a collaboration i've done a few collaborations this is spirit that is holding the collaborations like i've done a few collaborations on this channel not a few i've actually done just two wow so i've done one with prudence a pinnacle um and then I, i've done one with my sister just those two collaborations and I, I am open to collaborations but the thing is a lot of youtubers are not around me like where i'm based it's not the destination for a lot of youtubers so it's hard to do collaborations the other time i actually did a collaboration with one of my friends here on youtube and the video got lost in transition like it got lost um the video file got lost, I couldn't edit it, I couldn't post it. So I am open to collaborations, it's just time, time and chance happens to everything. That's the only reason why there's not been as much collaborations on this channel, but hopefully soon. The next video is, hello for me, how do you teach Rewo how to cook and at what age did she start cooking? So how I teach my children how to cook is I try to follow their, not just how to cook, how to do anything. I try to follow their life pattern. I've seen that and I've learned that in life you can't force anything. Do you understand? You can't force anything. So whatever it is that you want to do, you have to do it with timing. So when my kids start to ask me, oh, mommy, I want to wash my plate today. I want to be the one to wash my plate today, which is like the stage Rizzi is at right now. I will let you wash it. Then you wash it tomorrow. Then you wash it the day after and just keep getting better until you're old enough to actually do it as a chore currently have three daughters first one is 11 second one is nine and then the third one is four a four-year-old last week was asking please i want to make my own noodles i can want to make it by myself i want to fry my egg by myself and so i let her i was like okay sure no problem somebody's watching her they put the water on the pot and then she puts the noodles she does everything adds the spice and she feels very joyful because she did it herself. And so from that stage, eventually and gradually, she has started doing noodles. Every time they're making noodles now, Rizzy makes noodles. So it's almost like in the house, oh my God, Rizzy is the one that makes noodles every time. She's so excited. So that's how I try to just follow their pattern. Because I found that if you don't teach them at that point, they gradually get to a point where they don't want to do it. So it's better to just teach them when they want to do it. And then when they eventually get to the point where they might not feel like doing it, they've already learned it. And so it just becomes like, this is what you do in the house now. You have to do it every day. And then when I'm cooking, it's like a law. Like I can't be cooking. I can't be cooking and my kids are upstairs or playing with their table. Like you have to be standing there beside me. Give me salt, give me maggi, give me pepper, break the eggs, cut the onions. I try to carry them along as well in everything that I do, especially when I'm cooking. And it's not just because like I have girls. I'm not one of those people. Like if I had three boys, it would be the same thing. There are life skills that you have to learn as a boy and as a girl, male female you have to learn how to cook you have to learn how to clean up after yourself pick up after yourself you have to learn how to speak how to relate to people how to express yourself whether you are angry or not how to control yourselves those are like certain life skills i feel like whether you are male or female you have to learn those life skills and i try to teach you that a lot of people say oh for me you and your kids are like friends we're almost like friends but they know they know when like there's a line do you understand there's a line they know when when you're crossing the line we go out if i give you the eye you know you're supposed to sit down and behave yourself then when we play we play when we laugh we laugh we just about the random things i try to be as open as i possibly can to my children because i feel like that's like one of the most important relationships that they can have so and i want her to be able to cook more because i've been pressing the tire if we will start to cook by herself it's all over. I'm not entering that. Just be chilling. Please find me plantains. Please cook this as you bring it. But yeah. Hello, how do you teach your girls um, ethics and values? I try not to attack them. 
on their choices. So I try to show them the right choice. I try not to fight their choices. I don't know how to explain it. So oh, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't uh, quarrel, you shouldn't fight unnecessarily. Um, what are the, the most important ethics to me is like your sisters are like your ride or die. Like, like you should always have your sisters back. So that's one ethic that I try to teach them. I'm just very intentional. Yes, I don't have the time to teach them every single thing I would like them to learn. I don't have the time, but I just pray for God for the time. But I don't have the time all the time. But when I do have the time, we watch movies. I try to watch stuff that interests them. We watch TikTok together. We do TikToks together. So um, I think one time, Orizzi saw this and she was like, why is this man dressed like a woman? Why is this boy? dressed like a girl and I try to just make sure that those things I'm the first person to teach them they don't learn it in school so um, like sex talk I try to have sex talk it's very awkward it's very uncomfortable but I try to have the sex talk and I'm like this is what sex is this is how you get pregnant this is why you shouldn't do this and I try to prepare them for everything I feel they might need to learn and then just pray to God to help me in the end that's that's like the best that we can do right just pray to God that Father Lord whatever I cannot teach these children please help me Another thing that I do to be able to teach them right ethics is church. My focus in going to church, the number one reason why we attend that church is because they have a sound children department. So they have to be teaching them every Sunday. They have to give them assignments. They have to be carried along. That's the reason why I attend that church. So church also is very important to me because I find that church is like one of your social gatherings. So school, I can't really control who comes to school and a lot of things that go on in school and what your classmates teach you. I'm sure of what comes out from church. I'm sure of the messages that you get. They love our person. They look up to her like, oh my God, oh, she's a woman and she preaches. So I like to just expose them to the right things and the right at the right time and just pray to God to help me out with the rest. Because obviously there's still a lot of things that I might not teach them or I might not be doing right. But I'm very intentional about teaching them. The next is, what method of investment can you advise me to do? Investment, if you're in Nigeria, I don't know. Like currently at the moment, if you're in Nigeria, I don't know of any investment that you can do that you're going to get any interest in. Because if you bought shares a few years ago, your shares have lost value. If your money is in your bank account or you did the interest rate, your money has lost value. So whatever you're doing in Naira at the moment... As long as it's an investment in Naira, then I feel very skeptical about it because the money keeps losing value every single day. So I don't know any investment you can do that will appreciate, apart from maybe buying land. But like from your comments, I don't know if you are ready to buy land, but if you can get buy land, landed property, yeah, that's a good investment. But every other investment right now, I, I don't know. I know. So the best way I will feel if you don't have a lot of money, maybe change your money to pounds or naira or change your money to pounds or dollar and save it or invest it in dollar. Like investment in Nigeria at the moment is not really something that anybody will advise you to do. Because Next question is, hello beautiful for me. Can you share some tips on how to make money online aside YouTube? Aside YouTube, I think I've done a video about that. I will link it up here. I don't know where. So there are a lot of things. I've seen um, Fiverr. You can do. You can get money by fi from Fiverr if you are creative and you have certain skills. For example, proofreading, writing, video editing, um, picture editing, those kind of things. Thumbnail creations. You can get those done on Fiverr. Most of the ways that you can make money, because most of all the apps that people can use to make money to get jobs and just make like small money on the side, are almost limited because it's very hard to be able to. Pay you in foreign currency in Nigeria. So unless you have somebody abroad that they can help get your money for you, I don't know of any other way that you can make money from YouTube. What business can someone start with at least 
hundred thousand naira. Okay, so if you have a hundred thousand naira right now and you tell me that you want to start a business in Nigeria, I would advise you to go and learn a skill. It could be tailoring, hairdressing, whatever skill. I feel like skill in Nigeria is like one of the best things you can learn because there are a lot of ways to monetize your skill. Or doing like businesses like selling, buying and selling, whatever you buy in your store today is losing value. So I will not because I will not advise that. It's just learning a skill obviously takes time to learn a skill, perfect the skill, and then start monetizing the skill. So if you have the time to utilize whatever skill you are learning, then I would the number one thing I would advise you to do is go and learn a skill. That's like the easiest way to make money if you have limited resources. That's like the easiest way to do it. But if you don't have the time and you just want to buy and sell and make money, then I would advise you to do something that doesn't involve you having like a store or stock. So if you buy today, you sell today or tomorrow, you go back to the market the day after, that kind of business, something that moves very fast. So that could be jewelry, like earrings. I know that earrings, earrings, jewelry, those kind of things. They sell very quickly and you can buy them today, sell them very quickly, get your money and go back to restock in the market. Something else is clothes. People will always buy clothes. No matter how broke they are, they will always buy clothes. You just have to make sure that whatever it is you are buying, it is something that, that you have the right connect to be able to sell. You can't be like a baby girl and then be trying to sell clothes for married women that want to be covered up and all those kind of things. So you have to make sure that whatever it is you're selling you have the right market so if you are maybe in uni i would advise you to maybe sell earrings underwear in uni so uh jewelry on these clothing uh what else yeah those three yeah they will sell in university if you're outside uni then i would advise you maybe kids item kids item kids clothing only item those kind of stuff those kind of stuff will sell really well but right now, with the way the Naira, but well, right now with the way the Naira is growing, I don't know what I would advise someone to sell. Hello, for me, how do you grow a YouTube channel? Now, to grow a YouTube, I'm thinking of doing like a class because I've seen a lot of people ask me how to grow a YouTube channel, how to edit videos. I'm actually thinking of doing a class. If you feel like you'll be interested in me doing a growing YouTube master. Well, maybe I wouldn't call it a master class. If you'd be interested in me having like a YouTube editing class, YouTube class as well, please just list, type yes in the comment section if you'd be interested in that. And I will definitely put up a class because I've really been thinking about it. Like I've been dragging my feet like back and forth about it because it's always in like my comments. How do you edit videos? When I started editing videos, I didn't really know a lot, but I learned like different like small skills that have helped me to be able to edit better, tell better stories and stuff like that. So if it's something you would be interested in, just type yes in the comment section and I'll send you a message and we'll start working on the class. So if we can get five yeses, if you can get five yeses in the comment section below, the class will hold. <laughs> so anyways. So how do you grow a YouTube channel? First thing I would advise is post consistently on a specific topic, five topics, two topics, three topics, and just post on those topics and continue to post on those topics till you break through. So it's almost like cracking a rock. Like you keep hitting and you keep hitting until you get through. YouTube Nigeria is so limited. Like, there's so many genres and so many niches that people in Nigeria have no idea. Like everybody's doing the same lifestyle, the same, everybody, it's almost like everybody in Nigeria is doing the same lifestyle kind of content, day in the life, mommy in the life. Like there's so many content that we can do as Nigerians that we are not tapping into. So anyways, like I said, if you're interested, let me know, comment section. Uh, next, would you ever travel to the US? Yes, that's something I would absolutely love to do. If I visit the US, the one place I would like to visit first is New York. Oh my gosh, like I would love to visit New York just to like feel the energy. Even if it's for a day, 
I would love to visit New York and then from New York we can branch out to other places. But yeah, I would absolutely love to travel to the US. Another question is, I need a video on how to understand a husband, what I will do to make him happy. I have hot temper. I always admire you and CCMA. I will soon be somebody's wife. Please help. Hmm. Okay, so how to understand a husband? You have to first understand a boyfriend, right? I don't really talk about relationships on this channel, but today let's just dive right in and address it right. How to understand a husband is by understanding a person. I feel like it takes time, spending time with the person intentionally. So it's not just like spending time and just like chilling or like having sex or like going out to eat and buying food. No, spending time, uh, spending time in a way like talking, do you understand? Talking, going out, meeting their friends, hearing what they talk about with their friends. That way you understand the kind of person they are. If you go out with their, them and their guys, and their guys are just and they're like, ah, see that babe, yeah. see that babe, ah, it goes, I go knock him, I go do this. You know that that's his kind of person. Do you understand? You go out, there are certain things your friends will yap them about that would help you to also see that, okay, this is how this person is. I find that there are a lot of, there are a lot of things you can learn about people also from the way they treat people so when you go out how do they treat waiters how do they treat their drivers how do they treat their security men how do they treat people that work for them how do they treat people that they don't need to treat well do you understand so for example there are certain people there are certain people that i basically am not expected to be nice to do you understand? For example, they take a cab. When they get in the cab, do they say, oh, good morning, Noga, how far are you day? Or do they just get in the cab and they're like, let's go with them. But how do they treat people that are beneath them? How do they treat people that ask for their help? Um, those kind of things will help you to understand the kind of person you're dealing with and will help you to make the right decisions. The next thing you spoke about is that you have a temper and so you'd like to know how to control your temper. I feel like anything that you have, that you feel like, oh, I have a hot temper, you learned it. Like you picked it up at some point. If you have a hot temper and you have been taught from when you are young to control, eventually you will learn to control it. So you have to learn how to control your temper. You have to learn how to control yourself because everything can be controlled, like I said. So you have to learn how to control your temper. I used to feel like I had a hot temper until eventually one day I was like, why are you getting angry? Why are you shouting? Like, it's not that hard. It's not that difficult. Like, say what you need to say and move on. Something else I also used to have an issue with is expressing myself. When I wasn't happy about something, it was very hard for me to talk about it because I didn't want to confront anybody, even with like staffs in the office, my staffs. Like, I don't want to confront. I don't want to make them angry. I don't want to make them uncomfortable so I will just swallow whatever needs to be swallowed so that we can all just move on and go along and have a good time but I've also learned that in life there has to be conflict there has to be conflict and then there has to be resolution so to know okay how to understand people how do they have conflict how do they resolve those conflicts if it's someone that cannot resolve conflicts everything is like a huge battle then you know that that's a red flag so you have to decide on what you want to do but how do they resolve conflict how do they deal with conflict how do they address issues that need to be addressed when there's something wrong how do they do they talk about it or do they react to it so those are the things that i feel like you need to understand especially if you want to get married i always admire you and yemc now i would assume that after saying i have a hot temper you say you always admire you and yemc that means you assume that we are very calm we're not very calm we're just human beings and we're just on social media and so um yes we are typically calm but we're not like the calmest people you would ever meet in your life so i would say that try to be like oh i want my life to be like this person's life or like that person's life because sometimes you have no idea what they are going through behind closed doors you have no idea before i came to do today's video i was crying and i washed my face 
put on makeup and came to do this video or do you understand so i feel like try not to compare your life to somebody else make decisions based on you if you're trying to get married or if you're about to get married make sure that you're getting married for the right reasons make sure you're not getting married just because you want to get married or because your friends are getting married or because you feel like okay i'm 30 i'm 25 i'm 50 i'm 40 i'm 30 and i want to get married get married because you have seen that i have achieved all i want to achieve in life the next thing i would like to do is what get married because marriage is very easy to jump in to get out very hard so then what will i do to make him happy i feel like anybody that's not happy is not happy that's that's how i feel see it's like i'm a very happy naturally i'm very happy i'm a very happy person i've not been very bubbly for some time but i'm naturally very bubbly i'm very happy if you get to know me so but the thing is for you to get to a point where you feel like you want to be able to make somebody happy you can't make anybody happy i don't care who you are i don't care what skills you have i don't care if you have sex i don't care if it's sexually like anybody that is not happy within themselves anybody that is not content within themselves anyone that's not fulfilled by themselves there's nothing that you can do to make that person those things anybody that is not happy on their own is just going to bring you down by themselves so you have to make sure that is this person happy on their own before you try to make him happy because in getting married there's so many life challenges that you go through there's so many ups and downs in life we get sick we get better we lose family members we gain family members uh, we do businesses, we lose in those businesses, we gain in certain businesses, we lose money, we make money, we have children, the children break stuff, the children fix stuff, the children do well in school, the children can fail in school. There's so many things that will go on in life that if you are not happy on your own, I'm sorry, nobody else can make you happy. If you cannot find a way to see, oh, this is what's happening in life, be happy regardless of whatever is going on, then no other person can make you happy. And it will be such a daunting task to take it upon yourself to try to make anybody happy. So I would advise you, number one, find somebody that's happy. Marry somebody that is kind. Like, it cannot be overemphasized. It cannot be overstressed. It cannot be overset. Marry somebody that is happy marry somebody that is happy on their own that likes to be happy that likes to make you happy that likes to just have fun because when you marry someone like that it's very easy to make them happy the littlest things make them happy marry someone that's kind that appreciates little things little things like oh i was going out today i saw this ice sweets that you usually like i bought it for you and i bought it Thank you very much. The person is very happy about it. Now, if you marry somebody that's not happy on their own, if you like, you jump up, jump down, help them out, do everything that you can for them. It will never be enough for them. You would always just be jumping hoops and trying to meet up to their standard. And sadly, you get to a point that you realize, what the heck, it's not worth it, and move on. So try to make sure that the person is happy on their own and anybody that's happy on their own is very easy to be happy with them next question is un videos about university life and your experiences university life i don't know if i told you on this channel i went to two universities i went to ogun state university that's osu and then i went to Indonesian university okada two very different universities with two different vibes I, w I felt like i was two different people in the two different universities as well Ogun State University, I was a goody two shoes in church, church worker, first to get to church, last to leave the church, sleep in church, believe in church, do everything in church. Ibn I was the total opposite, didn't go to church as much, was just chilling on my own, just didn't want to be in anything that had to do with like church and campus fellowships and all of that. But anyways i don't know if you'd like to know more about my university life, just let me know in the comment section. I find like I find those things to be like, people are not interested in such stories, but if you're interested, let me know in the comment section below. Best possible forms of investment, I don't think I'm in the right place to advise you on that. So, um, 
I will not be able to advise you. And with that, we've gotten to the end of this Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions you'd like to ask, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!